So, what we're going to do now is build uh, a raft, quick raft, well, relatively quick raft, um, so that we can sail downwind. But what you've got to be careful of when, when you're doing any of these things, it's judging where you're going. Because starting here, we're fairly sheltered. We've got a bank with bushes behind us. Um, but once we get further down the lake, the waves will start building. Now it's not very much today, but if we swing around, we begin to see the effect of the breeze further out. And as I said, this is quite a, a mild day to do this on, but on really big Scottish locks or even this place, it can build very quickly and suddenly you're in an environment that you don't want to be. So it's just not about the technical, you've actually got to make decisions on the safety of the environment that you're going into. Uh, there is a slight problem with, with the way we we're building this raft. In this wind, this is exactly what I would do. But if you if you've got anything more than a rel relatively gentle breeze, then the water that's coming through is going to go into that gap and get squeezed upwards. So in reality, I'd try to get we might try and get this closer in on the boat. And the alternative would be instead of going off. The mid thwart maybe go off there just to bring that gap in a little bit closer. 
but that gap will mean it at speed we could squeeze water up in between so where the back's been pulled in tight that's actually pulled the noses out a little bit fine so what we've got here are poles for actually poling or punting the canoe upriver or in shallows but we're going to use them here to make an a-frame to hang a sail from um, i could pick up a couple bits of wood from a forest but in this country i really don't want to cut green wood uh, trees are fairly precious so one of the things if you if you're doing open water trips loads of cord um, and this is fairly good quality cord this is climbing cord i, I picked some up from uh, chandler's you know, like a yacht place some i pick up from climbing places but it's good quality cord this i would think is uh four mil maybe yeah five mil probably this one and it handles really well but you need lots of little bits of cord to be able to do this job yeah so i need to attach to one of the poles and there are a lot of ways of doing this and we perhaps show you one or two of the other methods but here i'm going to start with a clove hitch because it's very easy on a round surface need a nice long end on it now all i need to do from here is wind this cord that's it keep them together but that's it and i'm going to wind this cord round and round if I was doing this with wood actually I could now fasten this off that would be fine but on these aluminium poles it's a fairly slippery surface so if we now split the pole so there's a gap and I go around the middle type of frapping what that does let's not spread too far otherwise it's counter, counterproductive what this does is tensions it up a little bit more so it doesn't slip as I say there's lots of ways you could use a throw bag over the top uh, I've used a rope where we've twisted the poles to actually like a tourniquet on it but I've gone back to using this because it's fairly straightforward and I'm going to use another clovich to finish it off. And that is now fastened. Now I'm going to need to haul my cell up, so I'm going to tie an overhand knot in here that we use in a lot of locations to so just make a bite, tuck it through itself. I can put a carabiner on there. and that I can use to haul the cell up to the top. I'm gonna to use another piece of rope and this will be used to haul the cell up and down. So I'll just put it through the carabiner, screw the carabiner up and now just to make sure we don't lose that up into the air until we've got everything sorted, I'll just tie a knot in this end so it's ready to go. And then the final thing, I need something to hold it up from the front and back of the boat. So use throw bag. Take roughly the middle. So again, I'm going to tie a clovich, but this isn't around something. So I'll tie it with bunny's ears. One, two, put them behind each other, drop them over the top. I only need it on one of the poles. Now that's good because now we can, we're can we going to put that in place. That'll hold the back, that will hold the front. Up an um, if you like, I, I normally don't bother old tennis balls cut a slit and that can go over the end of the pole so it's not to mark the canoe there were two first thing this morning but we're down to one now we suspect the dog but i probably never put it in pac you, it's pac-man is he meant to bite your nose all right put him on again pac-man eats again pac-man eats again all right so normally i'd put it in to the seat yeah, you stand it up. Yeah, I'll put it into the gap in the seat. And stand it up. And stand it up. 
So rather than go off the back of the boat, it's going to get in the way actually, I'm going to go off the carrying thwart. And what I'm going to do is do that fairly loose. I'm going to tighten the front up a bit more. All right, so if we were gonna go straight downwind, this would probably be fine as it is. But what I'm gonna do is tie it to the seat so we can go slightly across the wind. Again, clove hitch. Again, I'm going to try and go around the middle of it. Because that tightens it all up. And finish it off just with hitches. A, a tarp from Agwill. Okay. That's the company that makes them. Can you tell me what it smells of? What does it smell of? Yeah. <laughs> Good smell of wood smoke. Right at this end in the red. Right, both hands you need. And now I want all these green ones put into that carabiner. Every last green one. Every last green one. Right, keep going. One. Now this has made it into much more of a triangular shape. Not very efficient, but that's better. Okay, well done. So I'm going to tie this on here. And this is going to shake around a lot, so I don't want a bowline or a bowline or something. What I'm going to do is double thumb knot, or half a double fisherman's over the other rope. That's my favourite one of doing it. I pull tight, that's good. Or another really good one in this situation, re-threaded overhand knot. Just make a loop and through, through the red. Keep holding the red for me, Lena. And now I just follow it back round like a set of train tracks. And that's another good knot because it won't shake loose. And on the end of the cell, it's gonna be a lot of shaking. So if you've got a knot like a bowling, unless it's backed up, it's gonna shake itself loose and come undone. So this is going to be to haul the cell up, so I'll take that knot out for the moment. I'm going to put another overhand knot in here. We can clip and screw up. Take it round the front now. Take it round in front. <laughs> if we were in the wind, we'd put the sail up once we were on the way. Whoever's going to be in this boat will be in charge of this. We'll put it on a release knot. I'm going to do a clovich with a bite.
Uh, because you set up a sailing rig? This, so the wind is now dying off. That's, uh, that's the rule of sailing. Spend all your time building it, wind dies. But anyway, before we go on the water, you really need to know that the, gr the group is clear on the wrists. If the wind picks up again, we will be traveling at speed. So the, the problem with that is if somebody fell over the side, we move very quickly. So the first thing is everybody has to know that somebody goes over the side, we drop the sail as quick as we can. Uh, everybody turns round, not the boat, they turn round, grabs the paddle, turns round to face back the way, and we go back towards the person as hard and as fast as we can. Some people advocate trailing a rope behind the raft, but if the wind's got any speed in it at all, and the idea is that somebody, a swimmer, would be able to grab it, if, if the boat's got any speed at all, they're going to be past the end of the rope before they even realised that anything's happened. They're going to be quite freaked going into the water by surprise, and it's going to be behind the middle of the boat. So I don't like to rely on that as a method. I do like to have a throw bag to hand, so it's one more option. So all this, the steering will be done in two places, one at the back, so somebody at the back can use a rudder and just swap sides to suit. But there's another trick into um, steering this boat. Come with me. What we can do, person in the out, people in the outside boats can actually push the paddle down in front of them and under the boat, a jam, so the water's hitting this face and it will push the whole raft that way. And that makes steering far, far more effective. We can go a reasonable distance across the wind, and that's why we've actually tied the, the poles down into the boat so we can go across the wind. But by using jams, we can push the front. If you steer only at the back, you only steer at the back of the boat. Further forward if you can. Is this, is this done? Do you see the clouds going past? Yes, you can. Can I hold them? Please don't want them. <laughs> That's my um, theory. You don't want to hold them. Okay. 